Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about how to write the formula for ionic compounds based on the name. So what you want to do is you want to first write out the symbols for your ions, and you're going to write the cation first. Remember, cation means your um, positively charged ion, and then you write your anion next. Your anion is your negative one. And then you're going to write the charges by those ions. If the charges add up to zero, then you're done. That's your formula. You just have one of each ion. Um, if the charges don't add up to zero, then we're going to use this crisscross method to figure out what the subscripts should be. And if we see a have a polyatomic ion involved, we'll need to use parentheses. So let's look at an example right here. Uh, we have aluminum, um, oops, aluminum oxide. Okay aluminum oxide. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down the symbols of these elements. So aluminum's Al, oxygen's O. Then you're going to use the periodic table to figure out their charges. So aluminum is right here, so it's going to form a plus three ion. Oxygen's over here, so it's going to form a negative two ion. Notice how the charges don't add up to zero. So uh, in what we need is for these charges to add up to, to zero. And what the charges represent is the number of electrons gained and lost. So really what we need to do is we need to um, get the right number of atoms so that the number of electrons gained is equal to the number of electrons lost. That's what we're trying to do here with this whole crisscross method. So, but what this crisscross method does, it just gives us kind of a shortcut to figure out um, a way to make sure the electrons gained equals electrons lost. So here we go. Our formula is going to be Al2O3. And if we talk about why this is, let's do a quick kind of breakdown of why this works. Okay, so each aluminum atom, they're right over here, um, each aluminum is going to lose three. Okay, so you have two aluminums that are each losing three electrons. So that means we're losing six electrons total. And then you have three oxygen atoms that are each gaining two electrons. Um, gaining two electrons, so notice how we're gaining six electrons total. So we're losing six electrons, gaining six, six electrons. Everything works out well. Um, this crisscross method was just kind of a nice trick to help us figure out this ratio, basically what we're looking at here. Okay, so... Um, if you have a polyatomic ion, you use a parentheses. You put a parentheses around the polyatomic ion and put the two outside of it. So if you want to say that you have um, two NO3s, you want to put NO3 and then you put a two on the outside. If you didn't have a parentheses and you just put a two here, it would look like you had 32 oxygens. So that's why we use those parentheses there. And you might notice there's uh, we've been ignoring the transition metals, right? Like we've been skipping over them when we talk about charges, and that's because they don't really follow the same nice, neat, predictable patterns as some of our main group elements do. So what happens with the transition metals is many of them can actually form more than one charge of ion. And so you will see in the name, you will see these Roman numerals that represent the charge of the metal ion. So like if you see iron two chloride, that means that you have an iron atom with a charge of two. And then iron three chloride means you have an iron atom with a charge of three. So for the transition metals where we don't know the charge, you will see the charge in the name, like in these examples right here. So let's look at some fresh examples to see if this makes sense. Okay, so sodium oxide. So I'm gonna go find sodium on the periodic table. It's right over here. Okay, so sodium has a plus one charge, okay? And then oxygen over here, here's the symbol for oxygen, it's gonna have a negative two charge. So first thing, write down the atom, um, or the ion symbols and charges. And then if the charges don't add up to zero, then you're gonna use this crisscross method to figure out what the subscript should be. So in this case, I need two sodiums for every one oxygen. That's because each sodium loses two electrons, so I need two of them for every one oxygen. My oxygen wants to gain two electrons. So um, this is what it's kind of looking like in terms of the bonding. 
So you have two sodiums are each giving an electron to the oxygen atom. All right, let's look at calcium oxide. So calcium is element Ca, so it's got a plus two charge. Uh, oxygen over here has a negative two charge. So this time the charges add up to zero. So I don't need any subscripts. The um, formula is just gonna be CaO. All right, magnesium chloride. Um, so magnesium is right over here in column two. So it's gonna have a plus two charge. Um, chloride is over here in column seven. It's gonna have a negative one charge. So those don't add up. So I'm gonna do the crisscross method and I need two chlorides for one magnesium. All right, and then let's do one more of these ones, lithium nitride. So lithium is over here. Um, it's gonna have a plus one charge. Nitride um, is over here. It's got a negative three charge. So I'm gonna do a crisscross method and I need, looks like I need three lithiums for every one um, nitrogen. Um, there we go. So those are some examples of how you're gonna write the formula based on the name.